Hello, it's Reya, and long time no see. Today I am back with a library haul. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, I say that this is a library haul, and it is true for about 90% of the books, but I do have a couple of manga that I have also bought, so I will go over those first. And uh, you might have been wondering where I have been this whole year, and let's just say that I have taken some time for rest and re relaxation, and also working on my uh, personal and uh, physical health, uh, mental and otherwise. Um, but without further ado, uh, let's go over the books. So the first couple of things that I bought myself uh, were Delicious in Dungeon, uh, volume 13 by Ryoko Kui, uh, translated by Taylor Engel. And then uh, the other one that I have is Cherry Magic, uh, 30 Years of Virginity Can Make You a Wizard, volume um, 10. And Delicious in Dungeon is my current favorite ongoing fantasy manga. I really love this. It is fantastic in all the right ways. It is funny, it has great character development, and it gets horrific sometimes. And especially in this volume, which I have already read, the imagery is absolutely batshit insane at times. Like, it gets really dark and twisted. The cover basically gives you plenty of good indication of what is in this volume. It is absolutely amazing. And I can't wait for the next volume, volume 14, which should um, be the closing volume of this entire series. I can't wait. And then uh, Cherry Magic volume 10. Uh, basically, this series follows the main character of Adachi, who, when he reaches 30 years of age and hasn't yet had any physical intimate intimate moments, uh, you know, he, he still has his virginity. We can discuss about the concept of virginity anyway. Personally, I don't like it either. Uh, but for the premises of this story, uh, the concept is that uh, he has remained a virgin uh, until his 30th birthday, and after uh, he turns 30, he suddenly realizes he is a contact telepath, so he can um, read the thoughts of people who touch him. And he accidentally finds out that one of his co-workers, this guy here, Kurosawa, has a crush on him. And it follows their relationship from start to finish. All of the like troubles they have, the domesticity and all that. I have been really loving this. I have watched the anime. This has a 12-episode anime adaptation. The anime isn't as great. Um, it kind of... Um, cuts corners on a lot of the more intimate moments um, and, uh, like, access some of the characters. Um, so I don't know if I would recommend the anime. Um, I would much rather recommend the live-action um, adaptation of Cherry Magic. Um, it takes a little bit of a different route to get to the same story beats, uh, but I definitely think that the live-action adaptation uh, is a better adaptation if you're considering which one to watch after you would read the manga, for example. But really, uh, like, heartwarming, wholesome, um, cute stuff in this series. And it tackles pretty intense topics at times. For example, housing di discrimination for LGBT couples. And, um, like, coming out to your parents and co-workers and all of that stuff. But it still manages to have, like, light-hearted enough tone that... It takes the subject matter seriously, but it isn't re-traumatizing to read for a queer audience, which I really appreciate. Um, so, really enjoy this series. Then, I have been reading uh, Chainsaw Man. So, I have the next four volumes that I, uh, that I currently have. I took a little bit of a break from reading this series, so now I'm kind of rereading the early volumes so that I can get caught up with the... Uh, all of the volumes have that, that have come out after, I think, volume 12 was where I stopped last year. So now I have uh, volumes 7, uh, 8, 9, and 10. So after I have finished reading these, then I will have only two volumes to go, and then I'm back in, like, new material territory. So 
uh, really excited for these ones. I am um, thoroughly enjoying Chainsaw Man. The art is crisp. Uh, I love that the author doesn't really use a lot of text to explain what the story beats are. He's very good at showing you via the art uh, how all of these different concepts that he has in mind uh, work. So, or or they have in mind work. Uh, so, would recommend the series. And also, the first season anime adaptation was really good as well. And then these next two items that I have on the list uh, were basically just I picked this up from the library by browsing the stacks. So. First is uh, We Only Find Them When They're Dead, a volume one. This is a science fiction space opera um, graphic uh, novel series by Al, e Al Ewing and Simone Di Mio. And uh, I basically looked at this and was intrigued because the art looks really damn impressive. It has this um, very diverse cast of characters, very dark, sort of claustrophobic um, interior designs in the spaceship that they are, because they are they're in this spaceship, this kind of mercenary group um, of people. And uh, yeah, I, I just really enjoy the art style in this. I haven't read this yet, um, but I am very uh, excited to pick this up. And I'm really glad that I saw it at the library. And uh, luckily enough, it was book one, um, so I could immediately borrow it. And then the other thing that I browsed through the stacks was A Skip by Molly Mendoza and No Brow. And this is uh, essentially a kind of portal fantasy. Uh, it, the summary is, when Bloom is suddenly flung into another world and meets the exiled and optimistic Gloopy, the two youngsters find each other a much-needed kindred spirit. But as they skip through dimensions and encounter weeping giants, alligator islands, and topsy-turvy 2D worlds, they find that their greatest challenge will be facing their own fears back home. And that just sounds like something uh, exciting, and I like the art style as well. Basically, the art style looks like this. Like, very painterly and fluid and colorful like abstract. I really enjoy this style, so can't wait to read this. And the next things I have uh, on this haul are basically for the Hugo and Lodestar Award reading. I'm planning this year to read all of the fiction categories if I am able. So for that end, I have uh, Unraveler by Francis Hardinge, which is uh, nominated for the Lodestar Award. And uh, I don't actually know what this is about, but the tagline says, In a world full of curses, what does it take to break free? Uh, which sounds in in intriguing. And it says, Nettle was only a child when she was cursed to spend her life as a bird, separated from everyone she loved. She was spared this fate by Kellen, Reddit's only unraveler, gifted with the ability to unweave curses from the victim's soul. And that's pretty much the only thing I want to know going in. I want to be surprised. I want to be sort of taken off guard uh, when I'm reading this. So um, I always like this idea of a little bit of a darker uh, YA. So really excited. And then I have... The Left-Handed Booksellers of London by Garth Nix, and the sequel, The Sinister Booksellers of Bath. And The Sinister Booksellers of Bath is uh, nominated for the Lodestar as well, and this was the first one, so I'm actually currently reading this uh, in order to get to this one, which is the actual nominee. And uh, this, I think, is essentially about these... This organization, I guess, uh, of booksellers. I don't know much about it. I know that Rachel from Kalanadi has read these and enjoyed them very much. And once again, I just want to go in knowing as little as possible because I want to be surprised and taken off guard. And then finally, I have The Red Scholar's Wake by Aliette de Bordard. Uh, from what I understand, this is supposed to take place in the Julia universe that Aliette de Bordard has created. This will be my first... Um, entry into that series, and the the whole series is nominated for the Best Series Hugo Award. 
So my plan is, because I'm fully, I'm fully aware that I cannot read all of the um, nominees uh, for the best series uh, in terms of like reading every single entry in the series. So my plan is to read at least something in each series and then based on the vibes and based on the writing style and everything, I will then decide if I one want to vote in the category or uh, or based on based on the vibes and the writing style decide which how I will rank the category. So yeah, uh, this has been the book hall, uh, the library hall and stuff. Obviously, I have been away for a long time. Last year, I did fully one video about all of my plans and goals and then proceeded not to do anything about that because I sort of fell out of love with reading and realized that I really needed to take some time for myself um, and uh, work on myself and my own happiness and stuff. And unfortunately... Booktube and uh, books in general weren't weren't really conducive to that at the time, but now I feel kind of reinvigorated and get and getting ready to kind of get back into the swing of things because I have missed this and I have missed talking to people and uh, the community. So I can't wait to sort of start from the beginning and see uh, where things take me. My plan for now is to kind of see where life and inspiration takes me in terms of content. I may not be back with the full monthly wrap-ups and stuff just yet. Most likely uh, I will be doing some Hugo-related content because I am reading all of the fiction-related uh, categories. Um, so expect some of those ranking videos I did uh, like uh, a couple years back. Other than that, I might be doing a little bit of a return to booktube Q&A video. So if you have any questions about, you know, life and what I've been reading, for example, or, or things that were happening last year, L let me know in the comments, uh, leave, leave the questions down there. Nothing too personal, obviously, but like, in terms of like, what I've been reading, where I've been, um, how the break was, etc. I'll definitely be able to answer those. So uh, thank you for watching, and I guess I will see you around. Bye bye! <laughs>